Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can do a very simple forecasting exercise using a methodology called the percentage of sales. The percentage of sales approach simply says that if we are expecting to grow or sell more, there are some items on the balance sheet and some items on the income statement that we can mechanically expect to go up. For example, on the income statement, you can expect cost of goods sold to go up. On the balance sheet, you can expect to have higher inventory or higher accounts receivables. And so for all those items, the percentage of sales approach says, well, to keep things simple, let's assume that those items will go up by the same percentage. And so I'll show you how you can implement this using a numerical example. And in the process, you will see how this forecasting exercise can help you do two important things. First, it can help you determine your external funds needed. Sometimes this is also called EFN, and this is simply the amount of funds that you will need from external sources, either by issuing more debt or issuing more equity to support growth. And the second thing that I will show you is that you can also use this forecasting exercise to figure out what is known as your internal growth rate, which is the maximum rate at which your business can grow without any external funds. So let's go straight to an example. So the most recent financial statements for Fondura Incorporated are shown below. Sales for 2024 are projected to grow by 20%. So as you can see, you're given an income statement for Fondura for 2023, and you're also given balance sheet for Fondura Corporation for 2023. And what we are expecting is that sales will go up by 20% in 2024. Interest expense is expected to remain constant. The tax rate and the dividend payout rate will also remain constant, so this is given. However, costs, other expenses, current assets, fixed assets, and accounts payable are expected to increase spontaneously with sales. Now, the first question that is being asked here is that if the firm is operating at full capacity, what that means is that the firm's net property plant and equipment, its fixed assets, let's suppose they're operating at 100%. In other words, the utilization rate is 100%. And so I have that right here. That's one of the assumptions to start out. Why is that important? Because what that implies is that as you're going to go from 2023 to 2024 to sell more, you cannot use some of your existing fixed assets to support that growth because they are already at capacity, which means that you will need to invest in more fixed assets. So what I've done here is that I've clearly laid out our baseline assumptions. The sales growth rate is given as 20%. The tax rate is given as 21%. The utilization rate, as I explained right now, is 100%. We can later on change that. And the retention ratio is 67.19%. What is retention ratio? Retention ratio is the percentage of net income that we are expecting to retain back in the business. If you look at 2023, the business made about 83740 in net income. And at that time, the manager decided to retain about 56265 If you look at this fraction, so 56265 divided by this net income of 83,740, that is about 67.19%. That is where my number is coming from because we are told that the dividend payout rate will remain constant, which is another way of saying that our retention ratio will remain constant. In other words, we'll be retaining the same fraction and paying out the same fraction of net income. So with that, we can actually proceed with our forecasting exercise. So here for 2024 sales, we'll have equal to last year sales multiplied by one plus this 20% because they're going to be 20% higher. What I'm going to do here is that I'm going to press the F4 key to lock this cell reference. Now, if I copy this formula and paste it down below, what I'm doing essentially is that I am increasing my costs by the same 20% and I am also increasing my other expenses by the same 20%. And I'm doing that because we are told that costs and other expenses will increase with sales. And for the sake of simplicity, we are assuming that they're going to increase by the same proportion, which is exactly what the percentage of sales approach tells us to do. And so our earnings before interest and taxes is simply sales minus the costs minus the other expenses. 
we are also told that interest expense is expected to remain constant. Why might this be? Well, maybe because the firm is planning on maintaining the same amount of debt. We are not given that information, but the key thing here to remember is that interest expense is not something that changes with sales. It is more a function of the debt outstanding. So for that reason, I'm simply going to say equal to 12090, which is from last year. So now we can get our taxable income, which is the difference between our earnings before interest in taxes and the interest expense. And because we are told that taxes are going to be 21%, I'm going to do equal to, I'm going to sell reference here to 21% and actually lock this with the F4 key as well and multiply this by 129.618. So this gives me my tax liability. And so now the difference between these two numbers is going to give me my expected net income. Based on this, I can forecast what my addition to retained earnings is going to be. Specifically, addition to retained earnings is going to be equal to whatever is the assumed retention ratio, which in this case is 67.19%. I'm going to multiply that by the 102,398. And the remainder, therefore, must be dividends. So I can do equal to 102,398 minus this number right here, and that gives me my forecasted dividends. We are done forecasting the income statement. We can now proceed to forecast the balance sheet. Now we are told that current assets, fixed assets, and accounts payable are expected to increase spontaneously with sales. This means that all current assets, so cash, accounts receivable, inventory, we can increase those as a percentage of sales. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm basically going to copy this formula that we had for sales because what this does is that it takes the number in the previous cell and increases that by 20%. That is exactly what I want to do with all these numbers. So I'm just going to copy this with control C and then I'm going to paste it here, here, and here with a control V. So basically my next year current assets will be the sum of these numbers. So about 149,000. We are also told that property plan and equipment or fixed assets are going to increase as a percentage of sales as well. So I'm just going to copy this formula with the control C and a control V over here. Now, please be careful. I can only do this if my fixed assets are operating at a hundred percent capacity. As you will see, if we are underutilizing our fixed assets, this number will be a little bit different. I'll address this point in just a little bit. But now our total assets will be equal to the sum of current assets and the net plan and equipment. So this is how much we're expecting our total assets to be. On the liabilities and equity side, we are told that accounts payable will increase spontaneously with sales. So I'm going to copy this formula right here and paste it here because it does exactly that. It increases my accounts payable balance by 20%. Now, notes payable, long-term debt, common stock paid in surplus, these are things that do not increase with sales. And so for the time being, therefore, we're just going to say, let's assume that they remain the same as they were last year. So in other words, equal to just this guy, right? Which means that our expected total is going to be equal to the sum of these two numbers. So 77,763. Long-term debt, again, is not something that will increase mechanically or spontaneously with sales. And so we say, okay, let's suppose this remains the same. So equal to... 127,500 and common stock paid in surplus, same thing. It doesn't go up with sales, so equal to 105,000 as well. Now, retained earnings, this is important. Retained earnings is just the total amount of money that has been plowed back or retained back in the business. This number does not mechanically change with sales, but it is a function of how much the business is planning to retain back into the business. And so it is a function of your forecasted addition to retained earnings. So this forecast tells you that in 2024, you are expecting to retain about 68,801 back in the business. By the end of 2023, you had a total retained earnings of 166,000. If you're going to add 68,000 to it, then in this year, your total retained earnings will be this number plus whatever it is that you're forecasting to retain. So this is very, very important. In a way, you're saying that this is how you will be internally funding your assets.
And so now if you do that total, you get 235,506, and therefore the total of your owner's equity is expected to be the sum of these two numbers. And so now if you take the sum of current liabilities, long-term debt, and owner's equity, I get 545,769. What do we observe? The balance sheet is not balancing. You're expecting way more current assets and your liabilities and equity will not increase as much to support those assets, which means that the assumption that you're making that notes payable or long-term debt or common stock and paid in surplus, that they're gonna remain the same, actually at least one of those variables will need to adjust upwards to make for this shortfall. And that is precisely what we refer to as our external funding needed. So EFN, which is simply the difference between what you're expecting your assets to go up by and how much your liabilities and equity will go up by. And so the difference between those is your external funding needed. So that is the answer to the first question. How much external funding will be needed to support 20% growth? About 13,683, provided that your fixed assets are operating at full capacity. In other words, your utilization is 100%. Now, the second question is, what if this number is not 100%? What if this is 80%. So it turns out that your forecast of property, plant, and equipment that you made over here, which was just taking the last number and multiplying it by 1.20, technically this is incorrect because there is one other thing that you need to do here, which is to take all of this and multiply it further by the utilization rate, which in this case is 100%. Now, the reason why I didn't do it before is because I didn't want to complicate things. And secondly, it wouldn't have mattered because multiplying something by 100% is the same thing as multiplying it by one. So it wouldn't have made any difference to your forecast. However, now, if you actually change this number to 80%, you will see that your forecast of net plant and equipment is going to change and it's going to be lower. And this shouldn't surprise you. What you're essentially saying is that you need fewer total assets to support growth because some of that growth can be absorbed by your existing fixed assets. And so now if you go back and take a look at your external funding needed, it actually becomes negative. In other words, you will have more liabilities and equity to support assets. In fact, in this case, rather than going out there to raise more equity or raise more debt, you can actually pay off some of the debt or buy back some of the equity. The last question that was asked was, what is the firm's internal growth rate? A firm's internal growth rate is the maximum rate at which it can grow without any external funds needed. In other words, when it's EFN is equal to zero. Now, for the purposes of this problem, I'm going to go back to the assumption that our fixed assets are at 100% utilization. We know that if we're going to try and grow at 20%, we are going to need some external funds. We are saying, what if we don't want to rely on any external funds? What is the maximum rate at which we can grow? Qualitatively, I hope you can see that the answer has to be less than 20%. But the question is, how much? So it turns out that we can actually do this problem using the goal seek function in Excel. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go click on data, what if analysis, and then goal seek. Now in goal seek, you'll see set cell to value by changing cell. What goal seek is asking you, what value do you need to set a certain cell to and which other cell would you like me to change in order to get to that value? In our case, what we want to tell Goal Seek to do is that we wanted to set the cell external funding needed equal to zero. And we wanted to do it by changing what cell? You got it, the growth rate. We wanted to adjust the growth rate in such a manner so that when we forecast our external funding needed, it comes out to a value of zero. And so now when you will press OK, it will do all the nice funky math for you and then show you that when the growth rate is going to be 16%, your assets will increase in such a way that your liabilities and equity internally will be enough to support all of that so, you, so that your external funding needed will be exactly equal to zero. And so this is how you can figure out a firm's internal growth rate. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning!